Hi. I want to talk about one of my most ambitious phil philanthropic uh, ideas that I, I called um, the African Pylon, um, simply because that's where this would probably be utilized the most. <clears throat> so the idea, or let me start with the, the problem. Um, the number one killer of people of all time is mosquitoes from malaria, followed only by some sort of disease that snails carry. And I have suffered from mosquito bites and I actually have a obsessive compulsive disorder with picking my skin. Um, and mosquitoes definitely don't help that. And not only do they increase your risk of infection and disease, um, but they also carry deadly viruses like the malaria, West Nile, <clears throat> and uh, many other horrible things uh, that they transmit diseases from. Not just the people, but deer and other wildlife are also affected by this as well. So my solution uh, was effectively some form of image recognition, like an AI thing that would be trained to identify and then eliminate mosquitoes uh, or any type of flying pest, uh, be it flies or whatever kind of thing is in the air and bothering people or any kind of problem. <clears throat> um, the way I think this would work best is if it were stationed in like the center of a village or popular area and was raised up uh, to a, as high as it could go um, <clears throat> so that it could get a good 360 degree camera of the area and once activated, uh, it would be equipped with a laser. Be it, um, these are small insects that don't require much force or energy to eliminate them. But I do believe that you could probably repurpose like a Blu-ray laser or just a lot of different things really could, could essentially just uh, destroy them. Uh, I did see a video years ago of somebody who had trained something like this, that they were do developing a prototype where it was designed to either destroy the insect or at the very least um, attack its wings and slice off one of its wings, effectively rendering it useless and would die on the ground shortly after. Um, Either way is fine. Uh, I think the wing approach is probably the most effective for conserving energy, but I don't think that in general it would be hard to, to do. Um, I was thinking at night or just even uh, periodically, it could do a mass laser sweep, essentially firing the laser in all directions or making sweeping turns. Um, to eliminate all of the flying insects in the area. Uh, the locals might have to take cover or shelter, maybe wear some protective eye gear, or just get used to um, the schedule, etc. But um, considering how big of a problem it is out there, uh, I think that drastic uh, steps are needed. Um, when I was thinking about this idea and how do you get a computer and a laser and a power source and all this uh, to these remote or um, poverty-like locations. And uh, that's when I started thinking a little bit broader. I recently discovered something called Internet in a Box, where it's essentially all of the important things of the internet, not social media, like, Instagram or Snapchat or any of that stupid bullshit. The real internet that matters. I'm talking about Wikipedia, encyclopedias, dictionaries, 
just like reference guides and videos on how to do and learn and educate technology type things. Um, and it's called Internet in a Box. And essentially, I think it only takes a few gigabytes, like maybe two or five gigabytes. And essentially, it's an offline internet where anything you want to, there's still a search engine. You, you fire it up, type in how do I make a fire or build a generator or whatever it may be that you're looking to do. And it'll bring up results that would be Wikipedia and like I said, other videos and information based uh, results that on its own, um, you know, it, it is powerful enough, but I figured in these remote locations where they don't have internet, uh, can't afford electricity and stuff like that, that these, um, essentially what I'm thinking is that these African pylons, um, could serve as a hub for not just safety in terms of protecting you from mosquitoes and insects, but for the inf uh, sharing and exchange of information, um, so the way I'm thinking it could work would, um, it would, it, it ultimately needs a power source. And I was thinking that since these communities don't necessarily have access to steady power, um, they could be sent with like hand, foot, solar, you know, these cranks that could manually be ran in terms of providing energy when needed. So just if they're in a spot or something breaks, they need to build a well and they need to know how to do it, what tools they need, how to build those tools or anything. They could go to this pylon, um, pedal or whatever they got to do to get it going for however long they need to do their research. And it would also be available in every language. Um, so it should be able to help anybody around the world. Um, I was thinking back to the mosquito idea, um, that if there was a way to incorporate, uh, dry ice, um, I know that that, when it melts, uh, releases carbon dioxide, which is what attracts mosquitoes, but there are many naturally occurring or easy to produce, um, compounds and such that release that. And I think that would be essential for this, where you would need to set up potentially in locations where maybe people aren't there as often, but you know that there's a large mosquito infestation in the area. You could set up one of these pylons uh, just to destroy those populations. And you could have the dry ice or whatever compound release the co2 to draw them into a kill zone or what have you as well <clears throat> so um this also kind of pairs with an earlier uh, idea in fact this is actually an evolution of uh, essentially was a type of force field technology for humans to wear uh, to repel insects. Um, the idea first came to me when I was wearing an Apple Watch. Um, I had learned that when you take an EKG on your, uh, with the watch, you connect your finger to the dial, and then the base of the watch is on your wrist, and it essentially creates a circuit, uh, on your body to read, um, and give that uh, the heart results that, um, they produce. And it got me thinking, um, you know, I've known or just been aware that, you know, humans have a voltage and it can change when we're wet or et cetera. Um, you know, the matrix is about how robots enslaved us to harness our ability to create heat and electricity in general. Um, but it just got me thinking, um, what would it take to repel an insect like a mosquito or a nuisance bug like that. Um, I also thought about static electricity that we seem to be able to build up uh, 
pretty decent amount of electrical charge. And when there's a difference between objects in their electrical charge, it has to create an equilibrium that can sometimes result in a short or a shock, uh, such as when you touch a doorknob and you see a little tiny bolt of electricity shoot out your fingertip. And it just made me think, if I could wear a device like the Apple Watch or maybe something a little bit bigger, uh, it could potentially regulate my my own voltage or amperage or whatever my, my body gives off and that with a regulator or what have you um, to make it safe so it doesn't affect your heart or brain functions or anything, that it could create an electrical difference so that if an insect tried landing on your skin, it would create a short and zap them away. Uh, essentially like a force field like technology Though it's not a physical field, it's that your body itself would hold a charge that would result in something being deflected uh, upon trying to make contact. <clears throat> and I actually talked to one of my phys physics professors uh, about this idea, and he actually gave me several formulas on how to determine, uh, based on the mass of the insect, uh, how much electricity would necessarily be required uh, to destroy it. <clears throat> and I have that formula written down somewhere. Um, I, I'm happy to share it, but um, I, I don't know enough. Of, I, I don't specialize in <laughs> electricity like that and don't know enough of its properties or let alone human biology to attempt to create anything like that but I think at its core I think the idea is still feasible uh, I think it could be refined or um, yeah I'm not sure I, I even thought that maybe there was a way to do it without an external power source like the battery in the watch uh, as I mentioned with static electricity um, you know simply the grinding of fabrics and friction can also create that and uh, there's certain materials that I know are really good at creating that type of static and I was thinking if there was a something maybe you could wear or um, maybe something you charge up yourself uh, you have something on your hand or your, your clothes that you can rub to activate and get to a certain level and as soon as the insect touches it would disperse and you'd have to rub it again to build the charge up but uh, I think that could be a way uh, to do that though I don't think that would necessarily be effective in places like Africa where they have these giant swarms of dozens or hundreds of these uh, mosquitoes and flies swarming people at any given time uh, I, that's where I, I think that the, the pylon or something would be effective but that the force field would be nice for just you know if you're walking in the woods or going through a hike what have you um it could just help deflect mm -hmm. the occasional uh nuisance from landing on you uh, i also thought that if you increased the electricity significantly uh it also would create um a quite literal force field that could deflect you know even bullets or any other blunt force um, thing. Uh, I'm sure there's limits based on mass and uh, other other things, but um, I think at its core, uh, electricity w would be a good uh, force field uh, to have. So, <clears throat> with this one, um, with the African pylon though, uh, I think that it's essential to just have that they could that these could be sent out in kits where they could cost maybe a few hundred dollars altogether and they could be shipped out or mailed out flown out whatever to these locations these villages um i know that there's a lot of funding for fighting malaria and disease and these foundations and 
they don't have solutions. They seem really good at wasting everybody's money by buying nets and poisoning the water and genetically this or that. It's none of that's working. Um, I'm sure it's reducing slightly um, the amount of cases, but it's not a solution and it's not enriching or empowering people like my idea does. And so I think with just even the basic smallest amount of funding, um, these pylon kits could be sent over all over the world and they could provide education through the uh, internet in a box. Um, we could potentially incorporate ChatGPT or uh, some form of AI to uh, communicate in the native language with these people so they could just uh, fluently talk to it and it could produce the results or give answers to them in the language that they understand and not needing an interpreter or anything at any given time. <clears throat> um, and then for it to also be a hub where if they can produce electricity for the, the mosquito killing or powering the computer, it could also be a power supply for generating clean water, for sending messages for millions of, of uses uh, purifying their water, cooking foods, um, but I think most importantly the access to information and uh, the ability to communicate in any language um, and to provide these resources and a safety hub for these communities that everybody could go to and all it would take is just a little bit of solar, hand crank, whatever you got to do, um, whatever the local, um, I think it might need to be adapted to whatever the en environment is. Cause there, there's plenty of, um, you know, if there's any kind of running water, you can, you can have some sort of hydroelectric generator. If there's a lot of wind, solar, uh, there, there's a lot of renewable energy out there today. And, uh, that with just a little bit of, um, manpower, I think, and some funding, we can really bring the third world uh, up to the first.